So what you just saw was uh, my lovely home internet connection, i.e. ADSL, from many years ago and a couple of my recent 1080p video renders. And uh, as you can probably tell, they feel like squeezing an elephant through the nozzle of a toothpaste tube. So I have a plan to remedy this, and uh, that involves this map. What I've drawn out here is the closest route from my house to a 4G tower and uh, it reads 4.82 kilometers so it's pretty much too far for my 4G modem to perform very well with its included antennae so I have a plan for that as well Meet the Internet Blaster so this is an old TV antenna I got from work uh, which uh, supposedly has uh, uh, some kind of manufacturing defect in this uh, a receiver part, whatever we call it, that you plug your actual antenna cable into. Uh, and my plan, as you might be able to tell, is to just uh, bolt my modem onto this. I was testing a bit early and it seems my theory holds some kind of water because the modem turns very, very directional when I do this. So, uh, the plan is uh, to use a spectrum analyzer, which I've got borrowed, to uh, see where exactly I should point this thing uh, in order to be pointing straight at a tower then remove this part because these elements are going to be absorbing most of the signal you want to go into the modem antennas and then just install this basically indoors with a modem tacked onto it. Uh, so the reason this works is because uh, here in rural Finland we actually run 4G at 800 megahertz and our TV transmitters are usually 500 to 900 ish megahertz and that 4G rollout has caused some very very major uh, TV reception issues uh, most notably with antennas like this one which don't have any kind of filtering of input so these will end up pointing at a 4G tower between the TV transmitter and the household and that will basically cause such strong signals that uh, uh, you can have the front end of your TV clipping or God forbid you have a, a, an amplifier in the system because that's just not going to be working at all. You just get so stupidly high amount of 4G signals in. Uh, the issues have been so great that the Finnish government has uh, sponsored some 4G filter installations around here. So I can assure you that this thing is going to be receiving some 4G. So let's just uh, start by having a look inside this antenna receiver box thing uh, and see if we can spot any issues with it because uh, uh, supposedly this antenna doesn't work at all. Uh, that's why I got it for free. So uh, I've poked off that thing and I think this should just... Uh, oh yeah. There we go. Come apart. I come. Alright, so there's obviously not going to be any issues with uh, the antennas. They're just piece of aluminium, so we're going to have something on this, oh, <laughs> okay, we have a very, very obvious issue on this, let's see if we can get you on zoom, can you spot the issue, we have a solder short to grind, no wonder this doesn't work, so let's just take a soldering iron and uh, remedy that, and uh, we're going to be able to use this to uh, just connect the spectrum analyzer and uh, find our towers. And there we go. That should be serviceable. Uh, the gods of RF are not smiling upon this project. Someone, probably me, has left the spectrum analyzer on in battery charge mode, so the integrated lead acid battery is uh, entirely depleted. Great. Mm. Problem solved for the time being. Not looking forward to seeing the state of ba that battery. But we are online. Let's recap our weapons. And I just need to set everything up if I remember how to use this thing. Oh, yeah, I wrote down some instructions on it. Full spectrum. And SYM, 
Ah, we're getting something. Now we just need to figure out our bands. So that's band one. Our we'll problem would be in UHF, so FM high band U band, so that should be UHF. Now we should be able to go to Oh yeah, you go to yellow button, then you can key in your frequency. We want seven ninety six Oh, something like that. That's going to put a marker on our full spectrum. Oh, that's our marker there. Let's just zoom in on that. Yeah. Well, you've got no focus. There we go. That should be 4G. Well, this thing is not right manual focus. Anyway, that should be 4G. So if we grab this and point it around. Oh, yeah. Oh yeah, <laughs> oh that's working so well. 4G, no 4G. 4G, no 4G. <laughs> I can do that all day. Oh, there should be a tower somewhere this direction as well. Yeah, there we go, that one should be further away though. Yeah, we're not getting anywhere near as good signal in that direction. Could be if we're a bit shielded by a metal roof in that direction, but yeah. That's the tower I was looking for. <laughs> Weird way, it should not be... It should be pointing kind of that way, according to the map, so we could still be shielded by the roof. Weird. Yeah, I'm going to experiment a bit with this. Hmm. I am a bit suspicious there about this super strong one here, right next to that one there. I'm kind of suspecting that uh, that might be my neighbours just using their phones and radios and stuff rather than the actual towers. This is just so super strong in comparison. Uh, but I have figured out this a pretty easy way to check that. Uh, I have no idea how 4G works, but this is my modem box, so let's just point the antenna, making note of where these peaks are. Point the antenna somewhere where there's almost nothing. There we go. Place a box. Right there. And turn it on. I think we're going to see some signal coming out of that. Oh wow. Okay, I think we might be clipping. Alright, I've modified the test setup because we were indeed clipping very, very hard due to the giant signal levels coming out of that thing. But uh, yeah, now we're definitely monitoring what's coming out of my 3G box because we're attenuated by 30 decibels and nothing else are, and we're close to this is going to be putting out this kind of signal level on uh, this band so let's just expand to that and uh, center that to roughly where the top peak was before I think was this said about 825 and that's 850 so hmm yeah, and anyway, we now got a very good reference for where we're transmitting at least. Oh wow, yeah, we just. This is such a great example as to why the 800 megahertz 4G is such a giant issue around here. See, I'm, I was holding the antenna in that direction to get some frequency references for, from the local DVB-T transmitters at 506 and 586 megahertz. Uh, and yeah, even though the antenna is basically directed nowhere near the direction of the 4G modem. In fact, this should barely be picking up anything from there. We're just spiking so hard we're almost clipping the front end of this thing. I could probably gain that down 20 decibels and still get perfect coverage on that. So, with that in mind, perhaps these those smaller 800 megahertz peaks actually are the towers, because if my neighbors were using the stuff, we'd probably be getting a lot more interference than, than we're seeing now. Alright, and I moved to pretty much the centre of the house and I've brought up uh, the directions to the two nearest towers uh, and I've oriented the computer in the same direction as the house. So, we're going to have one tower that way and another one that way. 
that one's closer, so I'm figuring we're probably going to get better signal that way, but it seems to be a bit wonky, uh, and that one generally seems better from my testing. Uh, but let's just give it a go now that we've got such a clear frame of reference. And absolutely no lighting in here. So let's just test for uh, the one further away. Just pointing the antenna the same direction as the computer. And yeah, that's obviously going to be the tower there. We're peaking at like 35. You're not going to see anything on that. Right, so let's uh, try the other one. Right, we're now smack dab in the middle of the house as we can get. And it's weird, we're getting like two signals from the direction of a stronger tower. V1 uh, cl uh, close to the bottom of the screen right now it looks more like the signal we're getting out of the other tower side wager. That's the actual tower. Perhaps there's another tower further away, pretty much line of sighted. But that's why it can get super strong sometimes. It's weird. I'm really not sure what that is. But uh, the lower one seems to be pretty much on the same frequency as the other tower. So we're going to say that that's. That's the tower, and the strongest we can get it is like, I think at minus 30, yeah, about minus 30, continuously. So let's just uh, go the other way. This antenna is getting so smashed. And just uh, aim in the direction of the other one, which would be that direction. Right into the exercise bike. But yeah. That is so much stronger. That is so much stronger. So I think that's the one we're going to go with for most trials. And since this one's definitely... Wow, well, that's peaking so high. So yeah, and it's good to know I can see it's pointed exactly as the computer says. So I have a pretty good heading. So now I'm just going to remove the uh, original receive bit from this antenna and just sharp some kind of contraption with my 3G mode in there instead. We'll see what happens. Now this poor thing gets to charge its battery for a while. This has probably been sitting empty for months. Ugh. Poor little lead acid battery, I'm sorry. Alright, so just for reference, let's try the performance of just my modem and antenna uh, without any extra uh, Yagi power at all. So it's just set up, there's the extra antenna, there's an additional antenna there, which you probably can't see because it's so dark in here. But it's set up, you know, should be pointing reasonably well to the tower. And we're getting two bars on the 4G, so let's run just a speed test to yeah Turku. and that gives us four megabits and jack shit upload but let's see if we can repeat something i've been experiencing while labbing with this before all i've done now is haven't touched a thing except i've turned that antenna upright let's see how that affects our performance we'll just test again this usually quadruples my upload speed so the download is the same pretty much well, we have. We're getting pretty much three times the upload speed. It's not as good as the best I've gotten, but that is better than 400 kilobits. Certainly better. And if we swap antennas, our upload speed increases yet again. How weird. And if we have both antennas vertical, we seem to arrive at some kind of middle ground. But having the black antenna vertical and the other one horizontal seems to somehow provide the best upload speed. So I guess I should probably consider that in my design. Hmm. Ah, perfect. And ta-da! There's the Internet Blaster 1.0 receiver module. Uh, so I didn't film the assembly process because it was so simple. All I did was uh, 
screw the scrap piece of plywood onto the original receiver module after removing the original antenna and uh, mixer, impedance, match it, whatever out of it and uh, I literally put a USB cord through the housing, taped it to a board, plugged the modem in and I cut two slits in this piece of foam, one of it going that way and that way just in order to hold this in place. So all I've left to do now is just to bolt this onto the antenna and uh, see what happens. And there we are. Just powered it on. We are getting some reception. I should be pointing roughly the right way around. So, right, we're up to three bars. So, let's try this again and see if it makes a difference. <laughs> that is a difference. 12 megabits from what for? Now, the interesting part is going to be the upload because that's obviously what I'm out, out after. I'm also going to try and flip the antenna on its side. Whoa! Ho, ho, ho. But perhaps I don't need to. 16 megabits, 17 megabits. Oh wow, that's amazing. <laughs> the Internet Blaster, 18 megabits. That's a more than tenfold increase. Oh wow. <laughs> that is more than 10 times faster upload than I've been getting before. And that actually is way faster than I ever got uh, when I actually spent uh, several hours the other day just uh, uh, putting the antennas on windows, very just moving around millimeters at a time in order to get the absolutely best reception. And with this thing, I just <coughs> eh, eh. ah, good enough. And we're getting what 12 to 18. Oh wow, that is that is such an upgrade. That is such an upgrade. Let's just flip this like so and see if that changes anything. I was trying to keep its balance while I was doing that, so I sadly couldn't film it, but that is a weird result. It absolutely ruined my download speed, but did almost nothing to my upload speed. Huh. Alright, I was just barely able to scrape up enough room in my media PC slash clothes slash hi-fi stuff storage room to squeeze this thing in. If <laughs> quite thankful of the 90 pack ramen bulk box is the perfect height to help this antenna right underneath the metal roof. So I just aimed it by just uh, shoving my computer down there in tablet mode and aligning it with the floorboards. So we should have a pretty good alignment. And I just turned the modem on and we should have 4G because the LED is greenish blue. So, with no further ado, and by the way I keep the uh, actual wireless box, uh, this is a, a TP-Link uh, TLMR13G by the way, running uh, router, some ancient version, it works fine running the uh, Huawei modem in uh, uh, high link mode. Anyway, we should have internet again, and Windows thinks we do. So. Moment of truth. Will it still perform? Well, that's not that impressive. Something's gone wrong. All right, I think I've got a kind of hypothesis as to what the issue might be. I have now moved the antenna back to the central room and we're getting 15 to roughly 18 megabits up. So I've now moved the antenna. Let's just check the upload speed. Yeah, it's shit. Over there, where the wall is, is similar to the wall in my tech room, so obviously the door and wall and window here are made out of less radio absorbing stuff than the wall that's making up the rest of the wall building. So that might make sense because this should be a solid wood house and indeed these walls are quite solid if you knock them. Whereas uh, the doors, well there are two doors, this one's pretty, uh, it's actually pretty solid, but they're obviously just not as massive wood. 
Let's just run this test again just to confirm. Yep, the performance is still shit, so let's move back to uh, just be in front of the door and see what we get. And boom. Issue resolved. The walls are too thick. Alright, so I've integrated a slightly less dicky main for, for it, uh, consisting of uh, an old cooler which I scrapped and a car battery in the bottom. And it even has a little handle. So the plan now is to put that on that chair and hope that it reaches up to that window. Alright, hours have now passed, but I think I'm finally starting to get this thing kind of tuned. So let me show you the black magic I've figured out. So for starters, I took this thing out of the antenna. This was mounted right here and connected to the central stalk, which I suppose is supposed to be kind of facility ground and uh, that basically increased, doubled my download speed and increased my upload speed by a few megabits. Uh, but then the second biggest change was uh, mounting this antenna with in the horizontal direction and with a wire coming out there. Just flipping it around like that uh, pretty much tripled my upload speed from 6 megabits up to about the 18 you just saw and I'm not sure I just kind of rated the wire away from everything that there I'm not sure if that made a difference uh, as far as aiming this thing goes I think it's pretty okay it's roughly as, as the map wants it to be but I think this thing is uh, wide enough to uh, do a reasonable job taking the a tower in even if it's not perfectly aligned and I'm not going to touch it <laughs> now that I've got it up to a, a pretty steady 18 megabits both ways uh, so as far as mounting goes I replaced the chair with uh, an old speaker box which is a bit more monolithic and looks a bit better granted the blue cooler is hardly the most stylish thing can we get this off at least wow it actually did come off. Oh, that's nice. And also mounting the antenna just by adding this little uh, two centimeter plate. And it's just the grill for the speaker. It also made a huge difference. Oh well, we've got so little light for this camera can't focus. And we actually have reasonable light. This camera is just shit. Ah, well, yeah, there you go. That's the internet blaster. Alright, since I'm not ready for this channel to turn into the Blair Witch Project quite yet, I've taken the effort to bring in a bit of extra light so that this amazing camcorder can capture something in way more than normal room lighting. So, there's the antenna, there's the blue box, and I've just uh, routed an extension cord in here since whoever built this house didn't see fit to put any power outlets in this room in any place and uh, I just grabbed a random junky uh, cardboard box to put the TP-Link TLMR13 inside and uh, that's in part to prevent it from getting cat pissed in case the cat fancies it to be an intruder and to punish me for stealing his lovely comfortable ironing board and also to protect it from that door over there and uh, the placement of that uh, box is somewhat strategic uh, the computer that's going to be connected to it uh, for the time being is in the basement in that direction so I want it as far there and down as possible and I also want it a bit away from the actual antenna since uh, while the big antenna might not be too sensitive to 2.4 gigahertz stuff the small ones are made for 3G as well so they're going to have a pretty reasonable a frequency range and I'd just rather not have a lot of wireless LAN going into the 4G antennas and vice versa because that's hardly going to make anything better. So there you have it. Oh, that took for a better part of a day. But I finally, after pretty much 20 years of having internet, I have something 
which at least bandwidth wise is faster than ADSL. Can you believe it? And with that, I say thank you for watching. Cheerio. Ah. <sighs>